Hi everyone. Uh, I'm back. Oops. Sorry. All right. I hope you had a good break. Fresh coffee, any tea, do some stretching. <laughs> great. Um, great. So we completed chapter five, uh, the spiritual aspects of worship ministry, but. Uh, this class, this session, we want to want to go towards chapter six, where we will talk about music and uh, technology for worship ministry. Right, um, music and technology. It's more practical. Again, um, a lot about this course is uh, about just being practical. Um, so we believe that uh, sound and technology is extra important for worship ministry. Right, the sound in general and technology in general is like, crucial because um, you want to have an evangelistic meeting or even for your own Sunday service. Uh, right, if you want it to be effective and efficient, uh, you need to have a good sound system. Right, otherwise, people at the back are not going to be able to hear. You can't keep shouting uh, week in and week out. You will lose, damage your voice, and uh, you are not simply going to be able to cater to your people to the congregation very well if not for the sound and technology. And if not for sound and technology, uh, imagine church during the period of pandemic. We were forced, uh, you know, the churches that did not believe in technology <laughs> were forced to, uh, you know, uh, learn about technology, reinvent or rediscover or, or force themselves to follow the path of technology. And so, um, and I believe that it is very important for all of us to understand the basics of what sound and technology uh, is and that's what this chapter is all about very briefly share a little bit about um, you know what are the different equipments that are used can be used sound and technology okay and uh, especially in this chapter uh, feel free to ask questions anything related to technology and sound um, you, you know uh, this is only to help you better okay so all right, let me just share the screen. Immediately, I, I've lost a lot of you. <laughs> oh boy, what is this? <clears throat> right, so uh, the different sound systems uh, for use in worship settings, church settings, um, you know, is very essential. Without this, um, you know, we will we will not be able to do what we want to do or achieve uh, in large numbers. That is. Right. Um, so some of the components that uh, we need to know about, learn about, uh, as a as a ministry leader, you need to understand uh, some of these basic things. Okay. Uh, so the first thing is um, microphone. Right. <laughs> oh, without this, people are not going to be able to hear you who are sitting way at the back. Um, so microphones. Uh, they they come in different shapes and sizes they have each have different purposes uh right we will learn just a little bit more about the microphones does anybody know anything about microphones that uh you know what are the any you know the different types of microphones that are, are that are available anything Anyone with a little bit of uh, recording uh, sound background, uh, sound technology background, that you've studied sound. Okay, cool. So uh, no problem. That's fine. So microphones are very essential, isn't it? Uh, in ministry, in our context of ministry, is very important for maybe singing or preaching, teaching, whatever it is. 
yes um, so even this headphone has a mic it's a, it's a very it, it you know it, even this has a name to it so if without this uh, you will you will still be able to hear but not uh, maybe not as clear as this one does right see you hear this you see the noise it creates <laughs> uh, so the microphone that is pictured to your uh, you know in this is uh, from a brand called Shure S H U R E and and the, this particular model is called an SM58. Okay, now how many of you remember this old Nokia phone uh, from the early 2000s called uh, 3310? You know, this early 2000s, it's old, very old Nokia phone, 3310. It could, you, can, you can kill a person with that phone. That's how strong it is, right? Sturdy. <laughs> uh, it can fall from, like uh, I don't know, how high it will still be intact. Uh, I, a lot of this generation would have not seen. I had the privilege of <laughs> holding that phone. I had the honor of you know owning that phone for a period of time. No WhatsApp, no problem. Uh, <laughs> no, a lot of things, no problem. Uh, it was the best phone I've ever had. So this uh, microphone comes under that similar kind of category is that it is very sturdy, uh, is super strong. Uh, this is what we will call it as the dynamic mic. Okay, so it's used a lot for uh, live settings, uh, for you know live sessions, uh, in-person meetings, uh, and a lot actually for dynamic. So this is a dynamic mic. Uh, in the next slide, you'll learn a little bit about um, the four different categories or types of uh, basics of uh, microphones but this sm58 is like uh, the industry standard for dynamic mics uh, there is not a single singer uh, or a sound engineer uh, who will not know this particular model sm58 it's this is a workhorse uh, it's like if you don't know what an sm58 is don't even call yourself a sound engineer or you know anything about sound. So SM58, remember that it's the dynamic mics. It's very important. Um, so what the four different types of microphones, uh, as I mentioned, are the dynamic microphones, which is a directional. That means if you point it only towards your mouth and you speak to it, it will pick up. If you point it in another direction or anywhere up the you know the heavens. Uh, and speaks, you know, some of the vocalists, instead of keeping the microphone like this, uh, they will keep it like this, they will keep it down here. You know, the dynamic mics will not pick up your voice if you keep it down here and sing. It's meant to be two meters or three meters away from your mouth. Okay, if you can see, this is the gap it should be uh, for it to pick up. That's the dynamic mic. Okay, and the second type of microphones, uh, what you see in this picture, uh, are called as the large diagr uh, diaphragm condenser mics. So basically, there are just dynamic mics and condenser mics. Under under condenser mics, there are two kinds. There are the large diaphragm condensers and the small diaphragm condensers. So what you see in the image right now are large diaphragm condensers, also known as LDC. Okay, so this, those are the short forms that are used in the industry, and it's important that you know them as well. LDC means large diaphragm condensers it's used in the studios more uh, for recording vocals or acoustic guitars um, you know any of the instrument that would be an apt it picks up everything it doesn't have to be uh, directional it's unidirectional so uh, these are very powerful you can you can set a microphone far away in the room and clap and it will still pick it up uh, if i had a condenser mic for this room it will pick up everything from the road to everybody parking the car outside, clapping, making noise, it can pick up very clearly. But it is, it's very good for studio purposes, recording vocals, um, etc. These these are not apt for live recordings or live settings. Okay, and then there are small diaphragm um, microphones. Small, as you see, you can they're much more smaller, and these are used for if you've seen a drum kit. Some of these are used for what we call as a overhead mics. So there's a big drum kit, and you'll see two microphones hanging on the top. That, that's, that means it can pick up everything, all of the, the whole of drum kit. Uh, and then it, these, some of these mics are used for choirs as well. You know, there are, if, there's a, if there are 40 people in a choir, 
Now, how do we can't give mic to every single person? This is where the small diaphragm condensers come into play. You set up like say five or say eight of these condensers, a low, uh, you know, SDC. Um, it can pick up the entire choir. So if you sneeze, gone. Everybody in the audience can hear you, you sneeze. Okay. Um, and then there are the ribbon microphones. The ribbon microphones are a hybrid of the dynamic mics and a, a condenser mic. It's a hybrid. It can be used for live and uh, studio purposes. Okay, so these are just the basics that we need to know of what microphones are and the importance of them. There are the dynamic microphones. Now, under dynamic microphones, I showed you only one example, which is the Shure SM58. There are a lot of microphones, dynamic microphones, that come under that category. Okay, and I just shared the industry standard with you guys. Um, okay, and then there are the large diaphragm uh, condensers, small diaphragm condensers, STC, and then there are the ribbon microphones. All right. Now, once you have the microphones, um, you might think, okay, we are sorted now. No. Where are you going to connect them? What are you going to do with those? It needs an interface. And that's where the soundboard or a mixer comes into play. Okay. Now, you, you, you would have at least seen these, this now, mixer. Yes. Or a soundboard. Right. So this is an interface. Uh, if, for example, it's like a, um, you know, the coding system in, of a computer, it understands only binary functions, isn't it? Like 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. That's the language that the computer understands. But how, are, you know, we have a keyboard that, you know, we, we, it has the letters that we understand, the numbers that we understand. And as you type in, there's the motherboard of the computer that translates what we type in to the language that the, uh, you know, the computer understands. And then again, it throws out the language that you understand. So if I say hi, so instantly, the processes, it's taken what I'm trying to say, it's converted and translated it and giving you an output that you understand, right? It's acting as an interface. And so that's exactly what a soundboard is, right? It takes the signal of me singing or speaking. It goes into this processor called the soundboard or a mixer and it processes it. And then it sends out the signal uh, which everybody else understands. It right. It, it, it's a it's a bridge again, and it's a very important bridge that uh, that you know it, it kind of uh, every, every sound signal goes in. It's the signal is changed and it sends out very different. Okay, so it is used to connect uh, all microphones, instruments, uh, you know, CD players, aux, whatnot. Uh, not many people use CD or cassette players, but you know, you get the point. Uh, so, and you, you see in this big uh, image, uh, you, you see this thing, can you see my arrow moving? Uh, you know, which you can be pushed up and down, up and down. Those are called as faders, okay, faders, F-A-D-E-R-S, a fader, a singular, okay, that you can increase or decrease the overall sound of a particular instrument to be a microphone or a guitar, etc., whatever, it doesn't matter. Okay, now, now this is a uh, ob obnoxiously big soundboard. Uh, you know, by the time we count how many channels, now channel is a very important word. Okay, remember this word called channel. Okay, now mixers come in all different shapes and sizes. There may be similar shape, but different sizes. Okay, so these are also mixers. You see, um, it's much more smaller. And here, this one, to the image to your left, you'll see it has only three channels, like one, two, three. 
and then one to your right on this image you see it's it's a little bigger mixer this will have about 20 channels that means 20 channels okay so what, what it simply means is you can connect 20 instruments or 20 in other words 20 inputs okay so let's say there are 10 singers and each of them have 10 dynamic mics so 10 sm58s for each of each of the 10 singers and then there are still 10 channels remaining isn't it so one channel can be assigned to an electric guitarist one channel can be assigned to an acoustic guitarist one channel can be assigned to a bass guitarist so 13 is gone down there right uh, one channel can be for uh, did i mention acoustic guitar i think i did uh, okay so we have electric guitar acoustic guitar bass guitar so that's three gone that's 10 plus 3 is 13 and then we have we are left with seven a drum drums might need uh, let's say two condensers on top so five gone there so you have five remaining um so i mean you can do whatever you want so you, you understand what i'm saying right so that's a mixer or a soundboard is an interface where all these different instruments can go in as inputs okay that's what is called as channels and mixer is absolutely very crucial, uh, you know, for, for like what, I mean, whatever we want to do. And this is just uh, the uh, this is the front side of the mixer. Um, can you all see it? Okay. Now here you see numbers mentioned, isn't it? from number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, number six, seven, eight, okay? And all of this until two, you have 24 channels in this mixer. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Now, uh, here's a scenario that happens every Sunday at church, okay? So there will be one person at the soundboard in the, you know, in the in the middle of the you know who will be set up in the middle of the congregation or in the sides and then there will be a couple of people on stage connecting uh you know the the instruments and so there's a person at the soundboard will say okay hey which channel is the acoustic guitar in and the person on stage will say the acoustic guitar is connected to channel number seven so he will know that okay you know the acoustic guitar is connected to channel number seven so if he wants to increase the volume decrease the volume uh tweak how the acoustic guitar sounds he will only control do all of that with the uh, with the effects that's con uh, connected to channel number seven okay so this is again basics of soundboard uh this is what it looks like uh, very important uh for without this life will be a little hard it's not impossible but it's very very hard <laughs> okay uh Right. So, so an equalizer or also known as eq uh, are you hearing so the, this will come under the tone controls so um everybody say tone control okay okay Maybe I heard you say tone control. Okay. So here's the thing. So once you connected your microphone to the mixer, okay, now everything is not set automatically beautifully. When you speak, you know, you might sound horrible, um, right? Um, so how do you control the tone? Okay, let's say, okay, can you increase the bass? You would have heard all of these things, guys. Uh, you know, can you increase the treble? Can you? I'm I'm sounding too. My voice sounds too flat, or my voice sounds too bassy. Can you do something? Uh, and so this is where the tone controllers come into play, or the EQs come into play. Is okay. You decrease the bass of a voice. You increase the treble of a, a person's voice. So you balance it out. And so this is a very handy equipment uh, for. A church to have this is what uh, an equalizer basically looks like is we're talking dbs isn't it or frequencies uh high frequency to low frequency okay you see the, the 32 hertz to 16k kilohertz okay so all these ones in say 32 uh, hertz 64 hertz they're all in the lows 
Okay, so if you want to increase the bass or decrease the bass, you play around with this this frequency. If you want to increase the trebles or the highs, you increase, you play around with the 4K, 8K, 16K frequencies. You push them high, it becomes way quinky, stick, you know, sounds something like this that affects the treble. Okay, so equalizers are very important, and um, and how and the use and the purposes of that is also very crucial. So you're the you're the senior pastor of a church, and you've hired a sound engineer for your church, and he comes and says, uh, Pastor, we need an equalizer for our church. Uh, if you have no idea what an equalizer is, your first response is going to be, why, why do we need that? What's its purpose? Why can't we manage without it? So for you to even have a conversation with a similar language of, of your sound engineer, you need to understand these basics of these functions. Okay. Um, what they control is the loudness of an audio signal uh, is, is signified by the amplitude of a signal. Now, what we're talking about now is the amplifiers. Now, what is an amplifier? It's something that amplifies a signal. <laughs> Simply, that's it. Okay. What what what's a magnifying glass? Uh, it magnifies a yeah, certain object or a letter, whatever, right? So just like that, this is a, a more technological uh, and electrical device is it amplifies a signal. That's what it does. So uh, some of the pointers, uh, what's mentioned is the loudness of an audio signal is signified by the amplitude of the signal. When the signal travels through a wire, the resistance of the wire causes reduction in its power. Okay, so when a signal travels through a cable, there is a loss in power. And so what? by the time it reaches the amplifier, what it does is it amplifies all the lost power that was lost during its travel, and then it, it pushes it. Okay, so that's what basically an amplifier is. Uh, you can go to some of these pointers. Um, it's very important ways for us to understand uh, the difference between... Uh, the different amps that are available amps is a short form for amplifiers like there's a electric guitar amp bass guitar amp, uh just a general amp that for your sound boards etc so a lot of small churches um, when i talk, say small churches really small churches that can't afford uh, a sound boards or mixers they will only manage with an amplifier an amplifier will maximum have say uh three or four channels. You can have two microphones, two instruments. That's all you can, you, you can kind of adjust with that. Right? Or one of the famous amplifiers in India is the Ahuja amp. That's a local <laughs> brand. Everybody would have seen it, a black, sturdy looking thing, like a brick. Um, so a lot of the small churches um, use those things. So by using amplifiers at different stages, the audio signals then can then be safely transmitted over a wired connection. So it just keeps the sound consistent. Uh, that's why we need an amplifier. Okay. Another thing, um, <laughs> do you know what this is? Yeah. So this this is a snake cable. So. I mean, like uh, snakes, snakes, snakes. <laughs> uh, because of its length. Now, here's the thing. Okay, um, so you see the head of the snake, right? And then you see all the different channels and pins that's out there. So that's like the tail of it. So the head, for example, let's say that the stage. Uh, is big and you try to say, uh, and then the soundboard where the mixer is, is far away, right, from the stage. So not all cables that connect from the guitar is long enough to go all the way to the mixer board or the soundboard. So um, the snake comes into play is so I can connect, plug in all my short cables on the stage to this one, the, to the head of the snake, and then the, this tail runs all the way to the mixer board. It's just one cable 
one thick cable that runs all the way to the mixer board. And from there, you use all these different pins to connect to the mixer board. OK, now again, this is necessary uh, if the soundboard is far away from the stage and if you have a lot of inputs. And this is very uh, necessary. Now, again, this is a, an analog version of the snake, but uh, there are we've moved into a digital world now. So into a digital world. Now, again, this snakes are very expensive. This, yeah, this uh, to make one is very expensive. This can, the, all of this has to be custom made. You find a vendor who makes these, you give an order, and he makes he customizes it for a, you know according to your need. Now inside this, right, there's one big thick snake. Uh, there are multiple cables. Now there are chances that wires can snap, can get damaged. Now if one wire gets goes wrong. The whole snake is waste, is, is, is lost. Because by the time you open up the entire thing and then figure out which cable has gone wrong, it's a very expensive affair. But what to do? This was what we had to manage with for the longest time until a digital uh, cable came. It was just one single in MIDI cable or D cable. This is one thin cable that, that connects to the mixer to, this, uh, to the snake on thing. Uh, it's a very cheap uh, uh, fix, and and also it's not as bulky as you know this big one. It's not as heavy. Uh, however, if this was still used. Uh, you know, is something that we need to know as well. Um, yeah, this is how the effect processors looks like. Again, tone controls. Okay, let's talk about speakers. Fine, you have the microphones. Great. You have the soundboard, which acts as an interface. Fantastic. Um, you have the snake. It connects everything to everything. So where is the device that's going to give an output in, in a language that you understand? OK, so on one side, you have the microphones. You're speaking, and then the signal is sent to the uh, mixer board that translates the signal to a digital thing, and then it has. There needs to be a device that receives the output and gives an output. So without speakers, everything else is an absolute waste. Right? And so, um, yeah, these are, these are some of the speakers that you would see. What you're seeing on the, in the image right now are something called as a stage monitor. Stage monitors. This is something, uh, you know, it's set for a person on the stage to hear themselves. OK, it's very important for a person on stage to hear themselves. So these are called as stage monitors, basically. And then there are other speakers, uh, you know, that would be stop sharing. That's the end of it. Um, and then there are other speakers you would have seen, which is kept in an, uh, which, is, which is known as the FOH speakers. OK, FOH it simply means front of house. Front of house speakers. Okay, are you doing okay? Um, are you learning something? Yes, Pastor, we are learning. Okay, awesome. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> okay, so these are the basic uh, sound equipments uh, you you require for an effective uh, usage in ministry to be effective, efficient uh, in in ministry. Right, you need to have speakers, monitor speakers, front of house speakers, uh, snakes, um, amplifiers, um, tone control. Tone control and equalizers, they are uh, they are like an icing uh, you know, on the cake. You don't really need them uh, unless you can, uh, like, you know, you have someone who understands and they can push it to another level. It's, it's a great piece of equipment, like equalizers, but if considering the size of the church, you can you know you can um, have a discussion about if it's a necessary or not. But my, good microphones, a good sound uh, soundboard, uh, good speakers, these are crucial. Good microphones, good mixer, and good speakers are the basics around which you can build everything else with regards to sound and technology. Okay.
Uh, now let's move on to some of the recording equipments that that will come in handy for in worship ministry. Uh, with regards to audio, uh, you need again, you know, like uh, we spoke about a soundboard or mixer, which act as an interface. Uh, in similar world, uh, in similar in the world of recording, uh, you have interfaces that need that receive signal from a microphone that goes into your laptop and gives another output. Um, so those are called as uh, again sim simply called as interfaces or audio card or sound card. It's what it's called, right? The sound card. I'm not sure if I can find an image of that. Let me see if I can find an image of that. Sorry, yes, just give me a minute, please. Okay. On Amazon site. Um, let's see. So if you're in India and if you want to buy so this is uh, uh, an audio audio interface. I've mentioned this in your notes. You will see this. So if if you want to just use your laptop, uh, if you want to have a very small studio setup at, in your bedroom, to, and you want to record uh, your own songs, your creations, so, you know, this is a very small thing that you can have. Um, so you have a laptop. That's great. So that acts as an interface which connects to this thing called the sound card or the you know this red looking thing. It has only two channels. So, uh, you know, one mic and one uh, for your instrument. Yeah, this is actually a good deal. <laughs> uh, 21,390 rupees. Um, so you get a headphone. Um, right, so when you connect this to your laptop and you start recording, um, you know, this is what is called as a DAW, D-A-W, Digital Audio Workstation. Okay, a digital audio workstation. It uh, it translates the DAW signal into sound. Very, very crucial. And I'm yeah, if you are into music and recording, uh, this will come. And I've mentioned a couple of uh, softwares as well that will uh, come in handy. Okay. Let me stop sharing. So that's related to audio and video. You need uh, some good cameras. Um, some of the cameras that I've mentioned there, it's not an exhaustive list. It's just some of the cameras that I like. But then uh, a lot of latest ones have come for good picture quality that you can invest in if you want to record uh, for yourself and, not, and also for the church, isn't it? Like if you want to live stream your services, uh, you know, you explore which camera will work best um, you know, uh, according to the budget. Um, you know, of the church, you can invest in a good high definition camera. That's the one thing that you need to remember is, is it HD? You know, then you can discuss about 4K, 8K, etc. Right, a good camera and a good tripod. It's, it's a stand that, uh, you know, you require. That's another important thing to have. And then you have to, if you need to invest in your video editing softwares. I've mentioned some of the Basic, uh, not basic, but good ones. Uh, iMovie, Final Cut Pro is most used. Uh, Adobe Premiere Pro is uh, very well used. Um, you know, editing software, etc. Okay, that's audio, video, and um, and some of the uh, projection software that's used to project lyrics. Uh, I've mentioned those softwares as well. Um, like Pro Presenter 6. Pro Presenter is what we use at APC, at least at Central. There are other softwares like Easy Worship, which other locations use um, at APC. So, and Proclaim is another software. We haven't really explored Proclaim as much, but Pro Presenter and Easy Worship are softwares that are used to project lyrics or even for sermons like uh, by scripture verses, etc., even media short. Okay. 
So explore some of these tools. Uh, lighting is, again, another icing on the cake. You can explore if you have the budget. You know, if you can see each other's faces, that's good enough. That works. Uh, <laughs> if you can see the preacher, great. You know, don't have to do anything. But if you want to uh, add some more drama to the room, make it, uh, I mean, it's, it's just beautiful. It just makes, it just creates an experience, isn't it? Um, so and venture into that, explore that a little bit, uh, depending on your budget, and uh, have a chat with your senior pastor, uh, and take it from there. Okay, there are some tools that I've mentioned, very few, um, that you can explore, use for your worship ministry back home. Okay, any questions? All right then, uh, great, that was, I hope that was helpful. Um, thank you for joining, see you all next week. Okay. God bless you.